And more importantly, this study, it is a study that I did with an extension grant. It was looking at how injectable trace mineral affected pregnancy in cattle utilizing range. So trace minerals are really important to beef cattle in many different areas. Um, trace mineral can increase performance, any type of performance in beef cattle, um, increase performance in the feedlot, increase performance with fertility, with growth. And trace minerals also influence embryo and fetal survival. Again, really important to reproduction. And copper, zinc, manganese, and selenium all have effects on reproductivity in beef cattle. And I'm going to talk briefly about each of those minerals a little bit more in detail. But I wanted to point my attention to this figure that I have up on the slide. So basically what this is showing is we have mineral status of a cow and whether that's low or high. And if we have high mineral status, adequate mineral status, we'll see all of the biological processes in the cow functioning properly. However, if we have low mineral status over time, for a long time, sometimes we can start seeing problems. So the first thing that we might see start to decrease is immunity. And then as time goes on, we'll see a decrease in growth and fertility. And then as time really starts to go on, that's when we'll start to see really concerning issues, those clinical signs, some diseases of deficiency for certain minerals. And so that's why mineral status really is important to all animals, especially beef animals. In the Intermountain West, um, we have four minerals that are typically deficient. This might not be the case for every area in the Intermountain West. For example, uh, my husband grew up in Manila, Utah, and they have really high selenium. But if you look at the Intermountain West as a whole, the four deficient minerals that we see is copper, zinc, manganese, and selenium. And typically those are deficient. And in Rich County, we really see these four minerals. We'll see a deficiency if producers aren't supplementing. So with copper, if we have a deficiency in copper, looking at reproduction fertility, we'll see a reduced first conception service rate. So when the cow is exposed to the bull, she starts her estrus, maybe she won't be bred her first estrus. That's what that means. We might see altered embryonic survival. Maybe that embryo dies. And we'll see a reduced overall pregnancy rates if we have a deficiency in copper. Looking at zinc, a deficiency in zinc can cause an increase in embryonic losses. In manganese, we can see decreased conception rates again, delayed estrus, increased abortions and deformed calves, and then moving on to selenium, if we have decreased selenium or deficiency in selenium, we can see an increase in early embryonic death. And then after the cow calves, if we do have a deficiency in selenium, that's when we see an increase in retained placentas. So all four of these minerals, we really see the importance of supplementing trace mineral to our cattle because not only, like I said before, that trace minerals really affects performance of cattle, and it also affects the fertility reproductive traits of cattle as well. So I wanted to kind of switch gears and discuss, typically in my area in Rich County, how cattle are managed when they're utilizing public land. So in Rich County, we have a lot of BLM that producers utilize as summer pasture. And so Typically what will happen is we have a cow and a calf and that cow calves in spring. And then that cow calf pair is sent to summer range in early summer. So for example, in Rich County, an average date is in the middle of May, May-ish time. And then, so then during that time, grazing associations meet. So grazing associations are typical in my area as well. They'll have a collaboration of several producers that make up the grazing association, and they as a collective group decide how they want to manage those animals. So the grazing association decides, okay, we're going to buy um, a pallet of salt blocks that we're going to give out to the animals. And so the grazing associations decide the mineral supplementation to the animals during the summer. 
After about a month of the cows being on range, that's when the bulls are turned in. And that's when the cows are able to be bred. So cows get turned out, you have a month, then the bulls get turned in. Well, what happens during this month of the cows just being on the range without the bull um, in the herds being able to service the cows? Well, there's little to no trace mineral supplement during this period because like I said, typically these grazing associations provide a simple salt block. And that's not wrong, but there's very little trace mineral in these salt blocks. And if you do have a, a salt block with trace mineral in it, a cow will have to lick or eat a lot of that salt block to be able to meet her requirements for the trace minerals that I've mentioned. So the research question came about, what if we injected these cows with an injectable trace mineral before turning them out on summer range? Would that increase their conception rates and or their first time service conception? So we created a, a research and experiment with this um, question. So we took 100 cows from one producer. So all these cows were managed the same. They came from the same herd. 50 of these cows did not receive an injectable trace mineral. They were our control. And 50 of the cows received one injection of multimin. We also measured body condition score prior to turning on on range and also when they came back home in the fall at pregnancy, pregnancy check. And then 20% of cows in each treatment underwent liver biopsies to determine the baseline mineral status of the cows before they went out on range. So we used Multimin 90 as an injectable trace mineral. And so looking at the NRC requirements of beef cattle for minerals, this is what's in multi-min comparative to those NRC requirements. So copper in multi-min is 150% of NRC requirements. Manganese is 50%. Selenium is 5,000%. And zinc is 200%. And if you read the label of multi-min, one injection supplies trace mineral for 30 to 90 days post-injection. So like I said, we gave this injection to the cows right before they went on range. There's about a month where there wasn't a bull with the cows. And so theoretically, these cows should have been supplied adequate amounts of trace mineral in that month because they received an injectable trace mineral, theoretically. With our liver trace mineral, so we took liver biopsies, like we said, and we looked at the trace mineral status in the liver, and the local vet came and performed these liver biopsies, and then we sent them on to Iowa State Diagnostic Lab to run this analysis. So on top, you can see the 10, I believe it's 10, 10 cows that were the control. And on the bottom, there's 10 that received the injectable trace mineral multi-min. And so the red colored um, cells are high, and then the yellow colored cells are low. So if we look at copper, um, interestingly enough, we had one cow that was high in copper. I do know this producer was providing some sort of mineral supplement to his cows during the winter. And then we had one cow that was low in copper in the multi-min group. Manganese was great. They were all within the adequate range for uh, manganese. And then molybdenum was high, which is really normal for Rich County. Molybdenum is high, but the reason why I have molybdenum here is because it can tie up copper and the cow won't be able to absorb copper as easily when molybdenum makes a complex with it in a really roundabout way. <laughs> And then selenium was low, three were low in the control group and four were low in the multi-min group. And then zinc was okay in the control group. And then one cow was low in zinc in the multi-min group. So I threw up that graph that I showed you right at the very first. Um, that with the mineral status. So why I put it here is looking at this table how low in mineral status are these cows? Maybe not too low. Um, they're actually pretty good. Selenium might be low in the herd. 
um, really that's the only thing, but is it, is it to the point where it's like, okay, this is a clinical, like mineral problem that these cows are having? Probably not. That's why we did this, um, the liver biopsies to really see the status of the herd. So we knew what we were getting ourselves into. Okay, so the, the next thing that we looked at was body condition score. And we body, like I said, we body condition score cows before they tur were turned out on range and then when they came home at preg check. So the, the multi-min group had a beginning body condition score of 4.52 and the control had a body condition score of 4.58. And then after coming home, multi-min group had a body condition score of 5.33 and the control group had a body condition score of 5.27. So after being on summer range, these cows increased um, a body condition, well, increased almost a body condition score. So that was good. So summer range treated them well. But when we look at pregnancy rates, this is when things got a little interesting when I was going through this data. The overall pregnancy rate of these 100 cows was 79%. The control pregnancy rate, the cows that did not receive an injectable trace mineral had a pregnancy rate of 83%, and the multi-min group had a pregnancy rate of 75%. And so really the multi-min, the injectable trace mineral did nothing. As I started to look more into this data, I started looking at what, what other things are affecting the pregnancy rate. So I looked into body condition score, and I also looked at the the pregnancy rate in first calf, first calf heifers. So the pregnancy rate in the first calf heifers was 20%, which is not good. And the average body condition score of these heifers was 4.3. So not terrible, but also a little bit less than ideal. I broke the pregnancy rates by the beginning body condition score. So here you can see that the cows that were body condition score three had a pregnancy rate of 64%. Um, Body condition score four had 68%, five was 93%, and six was 82%. So I started looking at different studies that have looked at pregnancy rates and body condition score. And what I saw is basically this study that I did in Rich County solidified other research. So here, this graph on the left is the graph that I just showed you. And then the graph on the right is pregnancy rates and body condition scores from other studies. And so you can see the trend is very similar to the current study. However, in the other studies, body condition score six had the highest um, pregnancy rates. Um, this is just me speculating. These studies that I looked at were not looking at cattle utilizing range. And so maybe when cows get on range, they're a little bit too fat. Maybe they see a dip in body condition condition score and that affects pregnancy rates. I don't know, this is just me speculating, but we did see something similar to other studies. So that the, again, that this research pretty much solidified other research out there. And then I started looking at the first calf heifers. We had a 20% pregnancy rate for the first calf heifers. Obviously there was something, something there that we could look at. And so I'm a nutritionist by heart. I love nutrition. So the first thing that I thought of was nutrition. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of nutrition for your first calf heifers. So what do we do with the first calf heifers? How do we manage them? Are we splitting them from the main herd? Um, are we feeding them better quality hay? Like these are all questions that producers should be asking themselves because pre-calving nutrition for first calf heifers is really important as well as post-calving nutrition. So I'm gonna show the importance of both with both of these tables. The table on the left is looking at the nutritional requirements for pregnant heifers. And this, um, this table is coming straight from the current beef requirements, the NRC beef requirements. So when we look at energy for heifers in grams per day, you can see the total, and this is accounting for maintenance, growth, and pregnancy. And you can see that month since conception is starting here. So month one, clear to month nine. The energy requirements for heifers increases quite a bit from the first month they're pregnant to month nine. 
And then down at the bottom, looking at protein, it's the same thing. Definitely increases to month nine of pregnancy. What's really important here is their nutrient requirements are increasing. They're growing a calf. And so at month nine, these heifers might not be able to eat the required dry matter intake that they should. So it's really important at month nine to really be offering our heifers nutrient dense um, feed so that they can meet their requirements. Now, after the calf, here again, I have energy in grams per day. And so this is for um, cows. Keep in mind, re nutrient requirements of lactating cows. Right after the calf, the nutrient requirements are very high because lactation takes a lot of energy. And then as they go on um, after calving, those nutrient requirements decreases. And then same with protein, really high after the calf kind of decreases, but what is missing here in this table? Where's the growth requirement? Because even after heifers calf, they are still growing. And this table doesn't show a growth requirement. So not only are heifers, they just calved, now they're starting lactation and they're still growing. That's a lot of demand on our first calf heifers. And we need to meet that, um, their requirements by offering them really nutrient dense or feed stuffs after they calve to meet those requirements. So those are some problems that I see with first calf heifers. And that might be a problem that we are seeing with this herd. Um, they, this year, this producer managed their heifers a little bit differently. And so that might be a result of that management change. Another thing that happened with this project is we utilized um, cattle grazing on the Three Creeks grazing allotment. If you don't know what Three Creeks is, um, it's been a work in progress for several, year, several years. This um, Grazing Association decided to start doing time controlled grazing instead of continuous grazing. It's been a crazy collaboration with the BLM and forest and the producers. And this was the first year that it went into effect. And there was a lot of moving parts. The producers had to start this year or things, the contract with the BLM would start all over. So they're kind of tied to starting this year. Not all the water troughs were in place, so there's some water complications. So cattle were moving um, everywhere and people were trying to get cows to water. And so because of all these things, there was really extreme confusion between the cows who have been grazing the same allotments for years. And now all of a sudden they're moving to these strange allotments they've never been to. You also have um, range riders and producers that this is very new to them. And so there was a lot of confusion with this Three Creeks grazing allotment. And so maybe that might be some of the, the problems that we're seeing with some of the pregnancy rates with this particular producer as well. So I did want to mention that. Um, just conclusions with what we've seen with this study. So pretty much multi-men didn't improve pregnancy rates, didn't do anything. But what we did see is it solidified other research. There's definitely a relationship with body condition score and pregnancy rates. We do see first calf heifer problems. I, I am not sure if it is nutrition related, if it had something to do with the three cricks that first year. However, I think it's really important to manage your heifers in such a way that you're really looking into their nutritional requirements um, because they are growing. They're also lactating to increase their pregnancy rates as three-year-olds. Um, could there be effects from starting a new grazing pro program? Maybe that's something that we might look, in, look into. So this research, we're gonna have another year of it. And so basically what's the plan moving forward? I think it'd be interesting to uh, navigate herbs that might be a little bit more, have more deficiency in terms of trace mineral. It might be interesting to look at different producers. This is definitely some questions that need to be worked out, talked about. But I think even though we didn't see a difference with using the multi-man, I thought that we saw some pretty cool results just off of this data that I quickly threw together because I got these preg test results back just a couple weeks ago for this presentation. So I'm really excited to be sharing this with you. And that concludes my presentation.